Hey, it's Eli K. Atlas. Welcome back to another episode of Drawing a Comic Page. This is the follow-up to last week's episode where I penciled in a page from my newest commission, a comic by Russell Smalley, who is one very cool client. If you haven't seen that, a link to that will either be in the cards or in the end credits. He's wearing a leather jacket, so I go for some leathery textures. I've also done a video on making clothes and fabrics and things of that sort. Now with all that out of the way, I start with my usual outline. I always go over my main figures in a panel with a big bold outline using my 1.5 brush. I use the Fabric Castell pit pens. Now we focus on the demon. He's supposed to be kind of fading in or billowing up from the boy, kind of like smoke. So I tried to render his shading a little more smoother than usual and gave his edges a more cloudy effect than usual as well. I usually start with the foreground element since I want to make sure the foreshortening is correct and that nothing gets cut off or anything. I think I've done a tutorial on air already, but basically it's just a lot of knowledge of lighting and a pretty good use of negative space. She's nearly backlit here, so that's one reason I attacked the hair the way I did. The demon's getting a little more animated now, so there's more smoke flying off him, almost like sweat. And that's really just to illustrate and give a sense of movement to him. He's turning to face the protagonist, Ray, still keeping the shading relatively smooth, but I do add a little feathering out of habit. Speed lines at the corners to give that added touch of intensity. I've really been trying to keep my lines a lot cleaner on my female figures these days. All my favorite artists do that. Somehow they can achieve this really elusive sense of softness on their characters. I don't know if it's how they round the edges out of their drawings or if it's the lack of lines, I really don't know, but I figured this would be one way to start for me. The street lamps and background elements are super simple. I add a bit of lighting and they're done. If you've seen my previous video, you saw that this panel went through a couple of changes from the layout to the final. Here's how I finally decided to do the perspective. I shifted through a few layouts and figures, but ultimately we want a sense of depth and height. Remember, your foreground characters should never shrink just because they're in perspective if they're near to the main central character. Don't dwarf the supporting cast just to make a good perspective shot because it won't work out. At the kid's feet you can see the shadow demon starting to spawn here. 
I uh, just did that as a little lead into the next panel. Now it's panel one. Again, foreground elements get the big lines, even the autumn leaves get a nice boost, while the background ones shrink a bit. When you zoom out where your characters are a little further away from the camera and you have to draw them tiny, you don't always have to stress the details on the clothing or faces. For example, if you read Spider-Man, you can see that when he's far from view, most artists skip drawing the webbing. The background was a pretty simple trace job, although I refined some of the details on the college buildings. And that is basically it. If you like the video, comment, like, subscribe, and share. And if you really want to go the extra mile, just go to my channel's front page and give me a high five. The button will be at the top right of the page, right near my banner. Definitely let me know what you thought of this video and if you want to see more videos like this. And definitely some suggestions on other types of videos as well. I often get back to people and uh, I will usually make a video based on a topic that you guys suggest. So definitely leave your thoughts and opinions and ideas in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.